So I'll go, I'll go over them, I'll go over them again a little bit more now, and then um, give you guys a couple of minutes to fill them out. So let's talk a little bit about um, some of the stuff on the next page, and then and then we'll talk about we'll kind of go through these other things in a second and give you guys a minute to fill them out. Um, so group frequency distributions are when your class uh, when the range is really large, so you need to have kind of group them into groups. Um, remember, they should be equally sized. Every, every class should be the same width. So you shouldn't have a class with some should be five wide and some three wide and some seven wide. That's not fair. They should all be the same width. Um, except for, it can be open-ended on the top or the bottom. So the very top you get 70 and above. Right? Here are some basic rules. Basic rules for um, class, classes and group frequency distributions. There should be 5 to 20 classes. Less than 5 is too few. More than 20 is way too many. We're on page 2 here. The next one, um, classes must be mutually exclusive. You have this thing about class which should be an odd number. That's something strange that you're, um, I did when I was following the notes from your book, and that's just totally... That's messed up. Just ignore that. Cross it out. The plus which does not have to be an odd number. Cross it out. However, the classes should be mutually exclusive. What does that mean? That means that, that no two classes should have the same person in it. So if you have a data value that's like, like five. I have five siblings. I shouldn't be in the one through five class and the five through eight class. I shouldn't be able to be in two classes. Do you, you see what I'm saying? I should only be in one class. I can't be double counted. Um, classes must be continuous. It shouldn't go from one to four and then from six to eight. So there's nowhere for me to go at five. There's nowhere for five to go, right? So it has to be continuous. It has to be exhaustive. In other words, if you have 42 out here, you can't just go to 40 and stop there. You've got to include everybody. So you've got to go out to 42. Okay. Um, or, you know, say you got everybody else goes to 40 and then you have one guy who's like 65. Then maybe you go 41 and above and do open-ended to include him. That's another possibility. Um, classes must be equal in, wi in width, right? Same width, five, 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 five. No, you know, one that's three or something else. Unless, except for open-ended. Open ended at the, at the beginning or the end is okay. Right, the, the 40 and above, that's all right. As a reminder, these are our class limits, right? The first thing are classes. Right, these are our classes. This is our lower limit, that's our upper limit. These are the smallest and largest a data value can be and still be in that class. Whatever these numbers are, they should be rounded to whatever your data is in. So here, my data is in whole numbers. These should be in whole numbers. So the first one is the lower class limit. So the smallest something can be and be in this class is 130. If it's less than 130, the next thing less than 130 is, and this data is 129, so it'd be in this one. So these might be, you know, something to the, to the, um, right to the nearest ounce or something like that. Upper class limits are the highest that you can be and still be in that class. The boundaries, boundaries are not, your data can't be a boundary. Um, so they're between the two numbers. So, um, the notice has, a, has one more decimal place than your actual data is in. Here my data is in whole numbers. So this is 129.5. From round to the nearest ounce, that thing's going to be 129.5. So it's one more decimal place than your actual data is in. And it's between the two. So you take the upper limit of one class and the lower limit of the next class and you average them, you'll get the boundary between those two. Right, so, for example, um, I want to know the, this is the boundary between these two because it is his upper boundary and his lower boundary. So you take these two numbers, 69 and 70, average them. Add them up, divide by two. You'll get 
the boundary between them. It's one more decimal place than your actual data is in, always. So the shortcut is kind of to add another decimal place and put a five in it. Add another decimal place and put a five in it. Um, class width. Um, it's the difference between a two consecutive classes. If you look at their upper or their lower. So if I take any two consecutive classes and subtract their lowers or their uppers, if you subtract them, what's 130 minus 110? 20. That's the class width for that for these classes. 20. Um, all right. So that's how you find it. Like I said, if, if it's somebody else's has made these class midpoints. So when you average the lower and upper class, so here, 50 plus 69, take the whole the class itself and average them. You'll get 59.5. It's the middle of the class. The midpoint should be, if you average the upper and lower boundary, or sorry, upper and lower, well, mid, um, limits or boundaries, either way, you'll get the midpoint. So here's quiz problem number two. Um, I, I think I asked you guys for the class width and the midpoints. <coughs> So the class width, how would we find that? If any two consecutive classes, right, and the number and the and subtract either subtract their upper limits or their lower limits. So if I took 69.0 and subtracted 64.0, what would I get? Five. Or 5.0 even. So five, five is totally acceptable. 5.0. But this tells me that my data is rounded to the nearest tenth. All of my data values are, are rounded to the nearest tenth. So that's why um, the limits go out to tenths. Because my data, I, I might have, <clears throat> it might be like the amount of drug, and they measure it to the nearest tenth. So that's the class width. Um, what did you guys get from the midpoints? So midpoints. So how do you compute a midpoint? You take these two numbers and you average them. 59.0 plus 63, oops, sorry, let's write that better. 63.9 divided by 2. And what did you guys get for that? 61.45. And you do the same thing for the next one below. What'd you get for that one? 66.45. And the next one, what'd you get for that one? 71.45. Do you guys see a pattern? Mm -hmm. Are you guys seeing a pattern here? Yeah. I think there's one class missing on the quiz. Yeah, there is one missing. So that's my bad. Uh, so this one, I totally screwed up. It's supposed to be there, but it's not there. So, so it kind of messes up your pattern. But if it was there, like it should have been. Then you just add five to get to the next one. Good? So 76.45. Yours, you were missing this one here. Mm -hmm. Is that right? So then you just, your next one would be 86.45, 91.45, etc. cetera. Okay. Um, the other question I asked you was, see how we kind of, we have data, and then we have all these classes with nothing in them. Does everybody see that? Mm -hmm. So zero, 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 zero. And then there's one guy way out here. He's an outlier. Right? Because look at all these zeros in between there. Everybody follow that? Mm -hmm. All these classes with, with nothing in them. So what we could have done instead, how, what, you could, what could you do instead to kind of clean that up and not have all these classes with empty nothing in them? Yeah. 84 and up. 84 and up. Yeah, totally. Or even 74 and up. Oh wait, sorry. 
84 and up, because yours, you don't have that other one. Yeah, so you could have just done 84, 84 and up. So everybody see what I'm saying? Mine is different because I have a 79, so I might have gone 79.0 and up, and above, or and up. And that would be an open-ended class that would include all of these. So it would have a frequency of... Is that a frequency of one? So, uh, everyone see what I'm saying? So replace all of these classes with just 79 and up. Your paper, you put 84 and up because you, you're missing that, that one class I screwed up typo. Um, and we just have a frequency of just one. And this is the exact case when you would want to use an open-ended. In general, you do not want to use open-ended. It screws up all sorts of data and stuff like that. However, when you have this outlier way out here, then that that would be the one time you might use that open ended. Okay. Um, I think. Um, let's see. Take a look at it, please. All right. Okay. So we'll go over this kind of quickly. Um, I think your last quiz, if I do this, then I'll make your quiz, your last quiz problem, a lot easier. So let's go ahead and go over this. Um, so these are the steps, but I think it's better if I kind of do them, show you as I do them. So the first step is determine the number of classes you want. Um, you, can't, you have to have at least five classes, no more than 20. And then choose the, the minimum data value or a convenient value below that. Um, so let's, let's see what we've got here. So here, first thing I figure out what my class width is. So I'm going to find my lowest and my highest and I'm going to subtract them. 33. My general rule is if it's more than 20, then just use your fives or your tens. Fives or tens or something like that. Pick a good class width that's clean and easy to read. Because right, like my friend Jim Hannon convinced me, um, in the real world, the whole point of making these tables is to make your data easy to read and easy to understand. You're trying to make a point. You don't want them to get caught up on, on weird numbers you have in there. So try to make your data clearer. And using class widths of 5 or 10 is a lot easier. And, and going on the 5s or the 10s. Right? Like 10 to 19, 20 to 29, 30 to 39. 40 to 49, that's really easy for us to wrap our heads around. Right? So you want to try to keep it clean and clear. So um, if your data, if your width though, when you take your smallest and largest, if you get a width of, of 20 or less than 20, then yeah, you, you should probably have a class width of like two or three instead. But um, I would say don't even bother with four, just make it five. If, you, if you, it looks like it should work at four. So two or three if it's less than 20. But more than 20, class width of five or more, I'm going to go with, it's not, a huge number, so I'm going to go with class width of 5. So, if I go with the class width of 5, I'm going to look at this number here, 101. What's the number, what's the 5 that's below 101? 100. Am I on board? Because 101 is not a 5 itself, so I, I need to go down to 100. And then what does our direction say? Okay, and then using the first lower class limit and adding the class width, proceed to list the other lower class limits. So I'm going to take the lower class limit and add the class width. What's my class width? Five. So I'm going to do class width of five. So I'm going to add five. 100 plus five, 105. Plus five, 110, 115, 120. 125, 130. Good. Okay, what next? Let's see. Then, find the first upper class limit by finding the data value that comes before that class. So, let's see. Oh, wrong way. 105. I want to find this one here. What number comes before 105? 
104. Right? Everybody on board? My data is in whole numbers, so I, need, I would go one whole number back. Um, all right. So, and then, how do I find the next one? Add five. Add five. Y five? That's my class width. 109, 114, 119, 124, 129, 134. Good. And then count them all. Use your classes. This is your frequency. So then I count them all, figure out how many are in each class, and I probably tally them because otherwise it's kind of a pain. So I'm going to magically do that. Oh, actually, it has me do my class. I'm sorry. My next step was actually to um, find my yeah, find my boundaries. So my boundaries would be boundaries. Boundaries should have one more decimal place that my original data is in. So here. 104.5, that's the upper boundary. I just add a 0.5 to it. And that's also the same as his, the next class's lower boundary is also 104.5. So that, once I find that, that's going to go both spots. And then next one, I'll take 109, add a 0.5 to it. And that also goes here. 114.5. Why is that? Because 114 is the number between 114 and 115, if you average them. So that, that's a little bit easier. So you guys are writing this down on your sheets, right? In your notes, do you have a spot for that on your notes? Is that correct? Putting these in. This is an example on the back of page, of the second page. Okay. I should all be doing it right in here on the sheet. Yeah. I'm confused. Uh -huh. How did you come up with the width of five? With the one of five? With the width of five. Oh, with the five. Because I have more than 20. My, my width from my smallest to my largest, my range is more than 20. So I want to go fives or tens. Got it. Because fives and tens are, are clean and easy for us to understand. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And 10 would have been too much, because I would have, I would have only had four classes if I did that. Okay. So you kind of fiddle with it and say, oh, if I did 10s, 1 to 109, 110, 120, 130, oh, that's only four classes, and you have at least five. Mm -hmm. So then you switch to this. And then I have to go back to find this guy here. So what's the number that's one, one half less than 100? Or I can just subtract 5 from 104.5. That's another way of getting back, right? Because these are all separated by the class width of 5. So I can subtract 5 from 104.5 to get that one. Those all work. Then next, I'm going to find my frequency, count them all up. So normally I would tally them. And I'd end up getting, let's see, um, 112 goes here, 101 goes there, 127 goes there, 120 goes there, 134 goes here, 118, 105, 110, 109, 112. And so you kind of, you know, you, you kind of tally through, and then you end up getting your total frequency. <coughs> Plus two. So here are my frequencies for each of those classes. Good. Right, spread them down. And then cumulative frequency. So I'm going to ask you to find the relative frequency or the cumulative frequency. 
kill material is again when you add up that class and any class that came before it. So that first class only has two in it, nobody before it. This class would have eight plus two, ten. Do you guys want a minute to work on this? I think 30 seconds to work on it. And you should have something that looks kind of like that, yeah? Okay, so we're going to take, um, let's take a minute or two and, and work on two things. Finishing up this. Down here, if you haven't, page one of your chapter notes. If you haven't filled in these blanks, fill those in. And then finish up your quiz, the rest of your quiz. Two quiz. So take a minute or two to work on those. 